Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, brain sharers. It depends on where are you coming from, what time zone you're in. Wonderful day to everyone. Thank you so much for sharing us your time and for being with us again uh, to the second webinar, second brain share webinar brought to you by Hero Summit. I am just so glad because today we are confronted by a question that is relevant to all of us, at least from the education space that we are all in. And that question is, how do we start to cultivate the culture of virtual education given all the challenges we face as educators? We tend to regard our school systems uniformly, but actually our schools are wildly different in their operations and impact on children, just as our students themselves are very different from one another. Children come from many different backgrounds and have very different resources, opportunities, and support outside of school. Now that there's an entire learning, not now that their entire learning lives, as well as their actual physical lives, are outside of school, those differences and disparities come into vivid view. And I'd like to proceed as I invite Dr. Dino Joey Cardova, please. Dr. Dino, are you there? Hello? Hello? Yes, all right. Dr. Dino, I asked you uh, to help us out. How is your school, how is Dipolog Medical College Foundation during the COVID? And how are you stepping up and moving forward to the new norm? All right, so um, basically we are encountering um, several challenges, but we have a positive mindset that these challenges will be really such an inspiration for us to, to make a shift in, our, in delivering the instruction. Mm -hmm. And um, as we have interviewed also our students, the challenges that they experience with our blended learning in the time of this pandemic, uh, most of them are uh, not, not really, uh, maybe like, um, let's say, 25 to 40 percent of them are clamoring about the slow internet connection to where they are right now. Because basically, if we compare our students here in Mindanao to those who are studying in Manila, of course, Manila is, you know, almost anywhere you can connect to the internet. But in our locality, those who are living in the mountains would really be having a hard time. But of course, with this, we are still exercising our full leniency with the students. So we're giving them option on... I would also like to welcome Sister Mercedes Ang um, in the room. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hi, Sister. <laughs> Wonderful. All the way from Pagigarao. Thank you so much, sir. Um, well, we are fine, but of course, the school is closed as mandated by the enhanced community quarantine. But we make use of a flexible learning management wherein classes are delivered by the teachers online, asynchronous and synchronous. We also have to monitor the teachers to make sure that quality online learning continues even during the lockdown. What saved us from this difficult situation is that two years ago, we really underwent digital transformation. We have a platform of delivery online in school because we have international students. We really offer distance education. And our graduate school is really offered online and blended because they only come every Saturday. Of course, some of the students, particularly those who live far from the city, are complaining that they don't really have access to the internet. But mm -hmm. we managed to tell the teachers to deliver it offline and use mm -hmm. social media, texting, whatsoever. So reach out, try their best to reach out 
to some of the students with or without the internet connection. So because we are in the province, so we have students who are outside the city and they have limited access to Wi-Fi. We can understand that. But we are trying. <laughs> we are trying our best. Real. I'd like to also invite uh, in the room as a reactor as well, the president of Mariano Marcos State University, Dr. Shirley Agrupi. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. And um, we are very uh, happy for this kind invitation of uh, what's this hero, Hero Summit. And with me here are my uh, QS team. We have here the, the director of the external linkages and partnership, the director of the uh, manpower development, our chief for um, international program student mobility and uh, our admission. All of us are here. And I heard that you announced that we are the biggest delegation in this uh, webinar now. So, <laughs> yes. well, uh, yes. Yes. that's thank you. That's our um, culture now under the new normal because we want to really uh, pin down every single opportunity for us to have a wider insight on how we can cope up with this uh, new normal in higher education. So you were asking how uh, it was, uh, how MMSU is creating the challenges. Just like any uh, higher education in the Philippines now, we are, we are challenged by the disruption of the academic calendar. We are also challenged by the implementation of policy, especially on the individual PSG of the different degree programs. We are challenged especially on the implementation of the flexible and blended learning because that's the only possible way by which we could continue the, the learning. But uh, as a whole, the pandemic is creating a total disturbance of uh, uh, our university ecosystem. So as a university, we are trying to, to come up. We are trying to come up with uh, a new policy, which is a data-driven because uh, as much as we want really to go back to the normal, we can no longer go back to the normal price. So we are yes. all involved in this new normal. So we, we launched uh, online uh, tracing. Uh, let, me, let me help you with a little introduction for us to get to know more of our resource person this afternoon. Amit Mahinsar, Mahinsarya is the co-founder and CEO of Impartus Innovation. India, and this is an IIT Delhi and AIIM Lucknow alum, alumnus and has been associated with the education sector for more than 12 years. Earlier as a venture capital investor and, as, and now as an entrepreneur, through Impartus and its lecture capture and live online classes products, Amit is bringing videos into mainstream learning and helping education institutes to go online. Impartus is also working on global innovations in live video analytics and is a clear market leader in its space in India and now expanding to Asia Pacific region. Before co-founding Impartus, Amit worked as an investment manager at IDFC Private Equity and has led numerous education, infrastructure and technology projects in India and abroad. He is passionate about technology innovation and Impartus is his second entrepreneurial venture in the EdTech domain. Ladies and gentlemen, our dear brain sharers and hero members, let's welcome Mr. Amit Mahensaya. Thanks, thanks, Bryce. Thanks Hi, Amit. Really nice to, to meet everyone here. And thanks, thanks for the introduction. And first of all, I'd like to apologize everyone since I'm one of the panelists on behalf of all of us that people had to wait. People had, I, I heard from guys, some people had trouble logging in. And I don't know what's the issue. In, in fact, in India also, today in my morning session, Zoom behaved directly. So is it okay. Zoom's issue or is it local issue with the internet? I don't know because, because okay. this, this would be the thing. But before I start, Bryce, maybe just, I'll set a context of my personal background. You've given a background. So I'll not talk about what, what I do, 
but just um, what what are my context what is my expertise so that people can expect their questions or take it with that context so okay. first of all i am not a academician and mm. in partners my company my startup is also doesn't know how to teach what to teach so though i worked entire in fact for the past 8 years now 9 years now in the education sector as entrepreneur but still my expertise is to understand the pain points of education sector my next question is many of the education institutions that i'm talking uh, to right now say that our teachers and students have never learned online before and this applies to more live classes now question is how do we manage the chaos in class and at the same time ensure that it's really engaging because my concern i'm a teacher i've been a classroom teacher for many years too um and you know it's different if you're really inside a physical classroom and then if you go use technology and do all of these things how do you really keep the, the lessons uh, engaging what is the experience like when i have like 50 people in a live class versus 4 to 5 people in the same live class i'd like sure. to understand this i know many are you know maybe asking this too sure. so one one bright thing that i always talk and think about is there's a there's a problem with online learning which which virtual learning which is there where the mm. teacher is talking to a machine many times teacher is not a actor and it's the the best doesn't come out when teacher is talking to a machine it brings in some amount of monotonous in the session that's mm -hmm. a challenge i'll talk about it later but there's also one beauty about virtual learning there's there are no back benches like in a class there are few students ahead there are few students back in a online virtual session every student is equidistant from the teacher there are no mm -hmm. back benches in an online class so if you if you marry these two concepts and think you can actually make a live class very engaging so mm -hmm. first of first and foremost it's important to give both the teacher and the student a feeling that this is live and it is possible by using lot of features that are built in for modulation let's say if you are taking a class of 50 students first and foremost is every student should be moderated should be on mute let few students raise their hands and bring them allow them to speak let one or two videos of students be there the moment this happens the class becomes lively even if students are not speaking one or two videos are there or after 10 minutes you have allowed a student to speak for 10 seconds immediately engagement and interactivity increases second thing that i talk is it's very important to ensure the attention span of students which falls drastically in online session if you have been a teacher you know how tough it is to engage students and it's tougher in online session very simple tools like after every 5 or 10 minutes before start of the session you prepare a list of five questions the in fact our platform allows it and some others might also allow it so prepare a simple list of questions which are 5 5 seconds multiple choice question after every 10 minutes run one of the question immediately you'll see the attention span of all the students come back use some amount of multimedia open a whiteboard keep scribbling on it even if you don't teach everything keep highlighting in the presentation keep annotating on the presentation the moment the student sees something apart from the teacher's face a quiz a whiteboard where the teacher is underlining stuff teacher is drawing something that makes for a engaging class and also after after every every given some time maybe 10 15 minutes allow one or two students to speak and you will see the students would feel much better much engaged in fact what i can also do guys is i'll share with all the participants give me a second a blog that i've written recently and this is this blog was written based on all the around 30 40000 teachers that are on there on, on our platform looking at that and we are actually thinking these first time online teachers how do they teach better and we have done extensive research around it how it's happening in us how it's happening in south korea how it's happening in india and so i have shared this blog with all 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 of them you can actually go it very simple best practices for online teaching that might also answer your question all right 